Scott's chief procurement officer, where he directed of all procurement and material management functions, also responsible for developing, deploying, and monitoring all of MDOT's procurement policies and procedures. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I'd please to introduce Michael Zimmerman for your consideration. Okay, Mr. Zimmerman. Thank you, Senator Hershey. Good evening, Chairman Young, Vice Chairman Beidel and committee members. My name is Mike Zimmerman, and it's an honor to be before the Executive Nominations Committee for your consideration of my confirmation as the state's Chief Procurement Officer. I'm grateful for this opportunity, and I want to thank Governor Hogan for his confidence in appointing me. I also want to thank Lieutenant Governor Rutherford for his guidance and support and his vision and the creation of the Office of State Procurement in this position. And thanks to Secretary Churchill for his support and faith in my ability to lead this office. As a longtime procurement professional, I believe I bring a set of unique skills to this position. Along with procurement, I have a background in quality management and process improvement. These skill sets will allow me to bring greater efficiency, effectiveness, and transparency to the state's procurement process. I've been a Maryland resident my entire life, and I look forward to continuing my service to Maryland. I believe I can take the state's procurement office to a higher level of efficiency and increase opportunities for more resident Maryland businesses in a fair and transparent way. I'll pause at this point and respond to any questions that you may have. Again, thank you for this opportunity. Okay, thank you. Uh, Melanie Griffith, Senator Griffith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening, Mr. Zimmerman. Good evening, oh, Senator. I'm looking at your name block. I wanted to, um, first of all, thank you uh, for the conversation we had in our meeting last week. It was very productive. I think I shared with you in that meeting that having done work with the President's Work Group on Equity and Inclusion, I became more familiar with the um, both the procurement and the MBE related issues around uh, the operations of the, the procurement office and the team that's working here in the state. I guess I just wanted to hear from you and share with, ask you to share with my colleagues your um, willingness to work with members, uh, you know, both and stakeholders around procurement issues, as well as minority business representatives as we work towards wealth equity in this state. Thank you, Senator, of course. Um, as we discussed, I, you know, I'm a firm believer that small minority businesses are the economic engine of the state. They, uh, if we can keep them healthy, they employ people and they grow and they will become hopefully primes at some point and be able to mentor other, other minority businesses, small businesses, so that they grow and keep the, end, the economic engine of this state strong. I think it's incumbent upon my office to open those doors of communication and ability for them to actually do business. So we have to train, educate, talk to, and, and, and actually mentor those businesses as well. Um, so I, I think the Office of State Procurement is is got tools that we can utilize to to help grow those businesses and, and I would plan to use them. Thank you so much. I appreciate that response. I think we're seeing based on the number on the subject of procurement, there's a belief and after reviewing the recent procurement reform, there's something that people believe needs to be fixed. So um, I appreciate your accessibility and willingness to work with stakeholders to improve that system. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other uh, questions, comments? Okay. If not, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank I think you. Mm -hmm. I believe there are. Oh, you have a couple see, of questions. Uh, uh, Senator Lamb. All right. Thank you, Chairman Young. Um, thank you, Mr. Zimmerman, uh, for the opportunity to meet earlier. I know we touched on these two issues earlier, but um, when we met privately, but I do want to get these on the record um, as something that um, you'll continue to address and prioritize and focus on for the future. Um, the two issues have to deal with number one, um, minority business enterprise goals, MBE goals that, um, you know, as, as you're aware from looking at the numbers, the state actually has been sliding away from meeting our MBE goals over the last couple of years based on audits done by the Office of Legislative Audits. 
So I'd like to um, get your sense of how you intend to get us back in the right direction when it comes to meeting our MBE goals. And then number two, having to do with emergency procurements and making sure that, um, as we, we talked about earlier, uh, ensuring that emergency procurements are really reserved for emergencies and that proper procedures are followed uh, in the event that you need to um, pursue an emergency procurement. Thank you, Senator. Of course, um, let me start with the MBE goals. Uh, there's, there's a lot of work that can be done there. And yes, I do recognize that the state has slipped away. Much of that may be due to the pandemic um, and the fact that some agencies were not doing as much normal types of procurement as they would have been otherwise. But I do believe that there's an issue with the, uh, the, app, the, the, way, the way that agencies monitor, measure uh, the actual goal process. So it would be uh, it would be my take that what we need to do is open that line of communications. We need to start monitoring and, and measuring more and make sure that the primes are well aware that we are watching and utilize the tools that are available to us today. Um, things such as liquidated damages and so forth that are in, in our contracts to make sure that the, that the primes adhere to the goals that they agree to. There's probably also a reality that as we're setting goals, we need to be a little more conscious of setting realistic goals and, and goals that, that can be met. Uh, so the MBE, as I mentioned earlier, that you know, small minority businesses are the economic engine of the state, and we need to make sure that we are keeping them healthy and growing them um, from minorities and small businesses into, into prime contractors uh, so that they can then help measure and uh, work with other smaller businesses to grow them. Um, and with regard to emergency procurements, having been in the state for a number of years, I, uh, I've seen, you know, I've seen agencies attempt to use them uh, as a method to circumvent procurement law. Um, I can just tell you that in this position with the new law that passed, having to go through my office for approval, I will uh, assure you that we will look at them and, and uh, make sure that they adhere to the, to the statute. Uh, does that right. answer your question, sir? Yes, it does. So I urge you to continue you know, prioritizing this for your office as you move forward. So thank you, Mr. Zimmerman. Uh, let's turn back to you. Okay, Senator Hayes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mine is more of a comment, I'm, I'm guessing. I didn't have the pleasure of meeting Mr. Zimmerman prior to um, today, although procurement is one of the things that I'm most interested in, I probably have a half a dozen bills around procurement this year. Um, and so I would like an opportunity to meet um, Mr. Zierman. One of the things that I'm concerned about, and I think um, my prior two colleagues articulated it most eloquently around MBE, but also expanded opportunities for local procurement, as well as a re-examination of um, our preferred providers who have a, a unique um, distinction um, in procurement in the state will have an opportunity to follow up on them things. But we have a full agenda and I don't wanna take up too much time Mr. Chairman, but wanted to express, express to Mr. Zimmerman, Zimmerman that I would love to have the opportunity to talk to him more about those concerns. Make myself available to you, Senator. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? If not, uh, thank you, Mr. Zimmerman, and we will move to the Commissioner of Corrections, Annie Harvey. Uh, had a nice talk with her. I don't know if we've ever had anybody more qualified than she appears to be. So, uh, Senator Hedelman, are you here? I am, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to introduce... Um, the panel to Annie Harvey. Um, she has been in Balt in Maryland since uh, 2020, just around the same time the pandemic hit and came up um, as Deputy Commissioner of Corrections. And now she is before this esteemed committee uh, to be confirmed as you should see fit for um, Commissioner of Corrections. She's been acting commissioner since March of 2021. Um, she has 36 years of experience in corrections, uh, having spent most of her time in North Carolina, but moved up into the lovely 11th district um, in 2020 and has 
been uh, traveling around the state, um, learning the basics of uh, the Maryland correctional system. And in my conversations with her, she talked, she used the word opportunities a lot, which I appreciated um, both in terms of her involvement with the correctional staff and certainly aware of challenges there, as well as in terms of uh, opportunities for people who are behind bars. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Annie Harvey. Thank you so much. Thank and uh, I'll let her speak for herself, but she touched on just about every important issue that I've heard anybody bring up uh, in relation to her job. So I'm sure she'll do it again. Uh, please proceed. Uh, thank you, Senator Heldman. Uh, good evening, Chair Young, Vice Chair Vital, and members of the Executive Nominations Committee. My name is Annie Harvey, and I'm the Commissioner of the Division of Corrections for Maryland Department of Public Safety and Correctional Services. I've come to Maryland following a 30 plus year career with North Carolina Department of Public Safety. While I was ready to retire, I was not ready to be retired. Maryland Department of Public Safety and Correctional Services has provided an opportunity to pursue my love of public service in a state that is progressive and seeking to advance the profession of corrections and improve the treatment of incarcerated individuals by providing the support and resources required. I joined the department in February 2020 as the Deputy Commissioner of the Division of Corrections and began my journey with Maryland just as the pandemic was impacting operations. I find myself in the mix of things, learning quickly the extent of dedication and professionalism of the department employees. I love being the commissioner of the Division of Corrections and serving the citizens of Maryland. It is my intention to work with the team to continue to move the agency in a positive and productive uh, direction. And I would be honored to have your confirmation. I would like to thank Governor Hogan, Secretary Green, Chair, Vice Chair, members of this committee for their time and consideration. And I will take any questions that you may have. Uh, Senator Ferguson, President uh, Ferguson. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, no questions. I just wanted to echo the sentiments already have been said. Just had a, a very excellent uh, conversation with Commissioner Harvey, and just was so impressed with from from uh, coming in as a as a correctional officer at the beginning of her career down in North Carolina, and just heard her whole story. I, I just think we were very very fortunate to have somebody with such um, experience and such a, a bright outlook on the role of corrections and and the impact uh, that the correctional system can have when we do right by people. So um, just very uh, excited about her appointment and look forward to working with, with her moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Thank you. Senator Hayes. I was just ditto in what the president said, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And I would ditto it, it also. She was very, if, if you, any of you get a chance to talk to her in more depth, she really covered the grant. Thank you. So if uh, there are no further questions, uh, thank you and hope to see you in person and move to yeah. the next uh, appointment. Thank you. Uh, the next is the Secretary of the Department of Emergency Management and uh, Russell Strickland and uh, Senator Gallion, are you with us? Yes, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, okay. Uh, good evening. For the record, Senator Jason Gallion here to introduce Russell Strickland for his nomination for uh, Secretary for the Maryland Department of Emergency Management. Mr. Strickland has been acting Secretary since uh, October, while previously serving as the Executive Director of MEMA since 2015. Mr. Strickland has an extensive background of experience, training, and education in the field of emergency services and first responder activities, which include fire and rescue services, emergency medical services, hazardous materials mitigation, law enforcement, fire inspection, fire investigation, communications, and emergency management. Mr. Strickland has served in a number of positions in his areas of expertise, ranging from a field provider to a program department agency leader. I had the opportunity about 10 years ago when I was serving as the chief of the Level Volunteer Fire Company, uh, and uh, Mr. Strickland was the uh, director of the Department of Emergency Services in Hartford County. So I got to work with him a, a good bit there. I found out he was uh, well-respected, well-liked, calm, level-headed demeanor, and just, a, just a, a great leader there at that department. So I respectfully urge the committee to accept the nomination of uh, Mr. Strickland for Secretary of Department of Emergency Management. 
And if, if I could, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could turn it over to uh, Senator Kagan, who would like to add a few words uh, through her role with the uh, 911 Commission. Hey, Senator Kagan. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Cheryl Kagan, Senator for Rockville and Gaithersburg, but here really in my capacity as chair of the Next Gen 911 Commission, Acting Secretary Strickland has been a phenomenal partner, ally, and creative problem solver. He's been working with me uh, for quite a while uh, as director of MEMA, the Maryland Emergency Management Agency, as well as in his new role with the new department that we created, the Maryland Department of Emergency Management. Uh, he's, uh, he's accessible, thoughtful, collaborative, and just, just really committed to keeping Marylanders safe from climate crisis to, uh, to natural disasters to uh, human-made terrorism and, and other problems. Uh, I strongly endorse him uh, to be officially the secretary of MDEM. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And I will also add that I had a, a great talk with him. He also has a, a, a fantastic background and uh, the kind of optimism and uh, enthusiasm that, that you want in a position like that. So, uh, Senator Simonair. Yes, thank you. It's nice to see you, Russ. Um, I wanted to put my support in there as well. I've got to work with him uh, on the committee. I serve. He's always been available, always been helpful. And not only that, one of my daughters works at the Secret Service, but along the way, uh, she worked under Russ and she had nothing but praise for him and his leadership skills. So certainly support him in this um, endeavor. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Uh, if not, thank you for being with us this evening and uh, hope everyone gets the opportunity to meet you also. So let's go to the Secretary of Department of Transportation and James Ports Jr. and Senator Jennings. Does Mr. Strickland get to say a few words or no? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so enthused about him, I didn't even let him talk. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Mr. Strickland. <laughs> thank you, and I was... Uh... I was overwhelmed and almost relieved for a few seconds, but thank you, <laughs> Senator Young and uh, Senator Bidel, as well as all of the executive nominations committee and, you know, Senator Galley and Senator Kagan and si Senator Simon Air, uh, my heart is very, very thankful to you. I want to especially thank uh, Governor Hogan for allowing me this opportunity. And uh, when we do talk about enthusiasm and excitement, I am a lifelong Marylander born and raised, and I have spent my life since I was 17 years old in some type of public safety, public servants type uh, occupation. And this to me is bringing it all together, particularly over the last 20 years of working very closely with emergency management to push Maryland so that we can be more resilient in everything we do before, during, and after disasters. And I especially look forward to, as we bring the 911 board into uh, the Department of Emergency Management, you know, bringing those ties together, specifically because both of us, emergency management and 911, work almost exclusively all the time with the local jurisdictions. So that's where our heart is, that's where all of the effort goes, and I just look forward to continuing that effort. And really, really do thank the committee for their time this evening and uh, taking a few minutes to talk. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Okay. If not this time, I will say thank you again. And we'll move to uh, Department of Transportation and James Ports and Senator Jennings. I saw you up earlier. Are you still here? I'm here, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, colleagues. Uh, for the record, Senator J.B. Jennings introducing Secretary of Transportation Jim Ports for his nomination. Uh, many of us know Secretary Ports from either his, the hat he wears in the Department of Transportation for the last 20 years or uh, his experience in the House of Delegates that he did for 12 years on the Ways and Means Committee. Just as a quick background, uh, Secretary Ports was on Ways and Means for 12 years. That's the committee, as we know, that handles a lot of the transportation issues in the state. And, you know, it's given him that legislative side of the equation with the Department of Transportation. When you come to his career in transportation world, you know, he started out with Secretary, um, uh, Governor Ehrlich 
as the Deputy Secretary of Transportation. After the early administration, he went to the federal uh, level, worked with the uh, National Highway Traffic Administration. After that, he went back to the local level and dealt with Harford Transit Link as the CEO. So he's had all aspects of, of transportation in this country, federal, state, and local. And one thing that makes Maryland unique that we know is our modals that all fall under Department of Transportation. And he's very uniquely qualified for each of those. An example would be uh, aviation, Maryland Aviation Administration. Secretary Ports was in the Marine Corps and served under the Aviation Command of the Marine Corps, so he understands that side of it. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, transit, he, he's dealt with that on the local level in Harper County, running the uh, Harper Transit Link. And you know, most recently, he was the director of the Maryland Trans uh, Transportation Authority. So he's well-rounded. I think he's well-qualified for this position. He's going to be one of the first who's fully uh, military background. He's a disabled American vet. So with that, it's my honor to present Secretary Jim Ports. Okay. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, Senator Edwards. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to second uh, uh, Mr. Ports' uh, nomination for Secretary of Transportation. Uh, I was in the House uh, quite a while with uh, Jim, and uh, we had our little battles back and forth, but he very knowledgeable in the field of transportation, all the modals of Secretary Jennings or Senator Jennings mentioned. And he would fill in quite often when the secretary couldn't do the CTP tour out in my neck of the woods. So he had to respond to all the questions dealing with all the modals and did a tremendous job. He's familiar with what's going on throughout the state. And I think he'll do a heck of a job. Uh, um, wow. Okay, thank you. Uh, Senator Eckert. Thank you very much from the Eastern Shore. I also would like to uh, underline uh, Mr. Ports for Secretary of Transportation. Again, we were all in the house together and we watched him, I guess you could say bloom and grow as he learned more and more about transportation. But from within the ranks, he's very well respected. And he is one who is very responsive. If you call him, he picks up the phone, he calls you back, he looks into it and he responds. And that's very, very well appreciated here in the Eastern Shore. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? All right, if not, thank you, Mr. Porch. And uh, next out of- uh, so Chair, I'm sorry, oh. I would have had questions, but are we gonna give Mr. Porch an opportunity to speak? Oh, we sure, sure are. I was waiting to tell so. Okay. Well, great. First of all, I want to thank all the senators for the kind words and good evening, friends and colleagues. And I just want to say I'm grateful for this opportunity from Governor Hogan to serve as Transportation Secretary. You know, a, a long time ago, I learned the value of hard work coming up through the trades as a steam fitter and at bg and &E as a licensed journeyman gas fitter. I started out installing every appliance that's in your house, hundreds and hundreds of them, trust me. My 30 years of working in public service and transportation started with the job that influenced my life like no other. I was a sergeant in the Marine Corps and a crew chief on a CH-46 helicopter. You could say that was my first taste of aviation work. As a matter of fact, I believe I, I am the first 100% service-connected disabled American veteran to serve as Secretary of Transportation. I was elected to three terms in the House of Delegates and served in both the Baltimore County and Baltimore City delegations. Like you, it was a great experience, the opportunity to develop knowledge and friendships. Now, obviously, there's too many friendships to name tonight, but I can't help but acknowledge uh, Antonio Hayes, who I got to know uh, very specially from the Baltimore City delegation. And of course, my Ways and Means committee mates Obi Patterson, and who could forget Ambassador Rosa Pat. I was on the Ways and Means Committee, which at that time heard all the transportation legislation. That's where I found my love for, for transportation. I served on transportation subcommittees and House Senate Joint Committees. In 2004, I was asked to serve as MDOT Secretary in the Ehrlich Administration, as A.B. Jennings mentioned, and I got experience in every transportation mode. I also learned a lot about Homeland Security preparedness and received some phenomenal Homeland Security training in Israel. 
From 2007 to 2009, I served the US DOT as Deputy Administrator for National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, making me the second highest ranking highway safety official in the country. I then worked for nearly seven years <laughs> on the Harford County Transit System. We were awarded the top locally operated transit system in Maryland for our size. I was also named Administrator of the Year in 2013. That was the very first year they gave out that award. And during our triannual federal review, it was the first time ever that they issued zero corrective findings. And in fact, they saw my maintenance system as a national model. In 2015, Governor Hogan asked me to serve as Deputy Secretary again. And four and a half years later, I took over as Executive Director of Maryland Transportation Authority. With my experience in transit, roads, bridges, highways, safety, aviation, and heaven knows I've got ports experience, uh, I was honored to be selected by Governor Hogan to follow Greg Slater as secretary. He's a good friend of mine and uh, enjoyed working with him. And I was thrilled to be sworn in last month in Governor Hogan's office surrounded by my family. I hope this tells you a little bit about my journey that I've taken from this point. Uh, with your help, I want to continue that journey and build on the progress we've made towards innovation and accessible transportation for every Marylander. I am committed to working with you as partners and others on that mission. I want to hear ideas, comments, suggestions, good and bad. And I believe that together we can deliver the future transportation in Maryland. With that, I would be honored to have your support. And I want to thank you all for allowing me this opportunity to speak with you this evening. Uh, thank you. And Senator Hayes. Sorry about that. I was a little slow on the draw, Mr. But uh, Jim, you took away my thunder a little bit there. Um, we go back to the days where you was a part of the city delegation. And Delegate Redmer and Delegate Klossmeyer at the time was a part of the city delegation. I was just a mere staffer to the Baltimore City House delegation, but good to see you. One of the things that's important, um, especially when it relates to the region, Jim, and my district um, is the VP Tunnel and the Frederick Douglass um, tunnel. Um, I, I believe you guys are naming it the BP Tunnel, Frederick Douglass Tunnel now. In June of 21, Governor Hogan made it through uh, Secretary Slater, um, your predecessor, that, uh, they, that they would identify funding sources and financial packet as it relates to that tunnel. Um, is there any status on the negotiations around Amtrak and are you just as committed as Secretary Slater to that project? Sure. Oh, yes. Well, first of all, yes, I'm committed to that project. Um, and we are in negotiations with Amtrak. Uh, they're, they're ongoing as we move toward a final financial plan and agreement. We expect that uh, sometime later this year. Right now, uh, just to give you kind of an idea of some of the priorities that, that we're working on, we're looking at new ADA compliant West Baltimore Station. I know you're very familiar with that area uh, and with that station uh, and the bus loop. We're looking at expansion of service to Perryville on weekends. We also are working with Amtrak to get additional weekday rush hour train slots and additional weekday off peak uh, headways. And, and so that's throughout the day. Um, we're looking for additional weekend slots. And uh, of course, we're looking at also at some inclusion of a BWI fourth track project. That's a really important area for this, uh, this segment and a replacement and upgrade of the Wilkins and Gwyn's interlocks. So we are continuing those negotiations at Amtrak. As you know, they own the tracks, right? So we have to negotiate with them. And I think this aligns with pretty much all of the goals that we have for that pen line. That we, that we outlined in the Mark Cornerstone plan. And, um, you know, I just want to thank Holly Arnold too, because she's done a tremendous job moving these discussions forward uh, with my predecessor, uh, Greg Slater, and also briefing me up on this important project. So uh, yes, we remain very committed to this one, Senator. Thank you for answering that question. And I would be remiss not to say that uh, throughout the last two years, even before your arrival, and even now, MDOT and MTA has really stepped up as it relates to CIAA. As you guys know, at the end of Black History Month is probably one of the largest 
congregation of um, historically black colleges and universities compete. And so thank you for all your work that you've done in, as that, in that regard. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your comments on that. I did send an email out about CIAA. And uh, if you look, you might even see a poster there. We got the posters delivered today and uh, we're putting them up at the Mark stations and, uh, and some of the, uh, the outlets for Mark. And uh, we're gonna continue to push that message out as, as you requested. So thank you. Thank you again for uh, okay. being aware of those negotiations. Uh, thank you. And Senator Feldman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Good to see you, Mr. Ports, Mr. Secretary. Um, you just mentioned Mark. So just a couple of quick, one real quick question on, on that front. So the last two years, um, the General Assembly actually has passed legislation, you know, directing MDOT uh, to negotiate with Northern Virginia. My own district is right across the river from Northern Virginia uh, to pilot and ultimately run a Mark a commuter rail service from Baltimore all the way to Northern Virginia as well as connecting Mark uh, system all the way to Philadelphia and the SEPTA system uh, in, into Delaware. And so that uh, is each of the last two years, there's been legislation directing uh, you to negotiate that with North Virginia. So what can you tell us about the status of, of uh, what's going on in terms of the conversations between MDOT and Northern Virginia? And is this something that's gonna be a priority for you over the remaining 10 months or 11 months? Um, so that's really, uh, my specific question, Mr. Ports. Sure, Senator. Um, be happy to answer that. So we are still in negotiations with Virginia and, of course, up north with our folks up there. Um, you know, one is the Long Bridge. Uh, we need some work on that Long Bridge down in the Virginia area. Again, we're working with them and Union Station to uh, see how we can accommodate that. And, of course, up north, uh, we do have to add some track. And we're looking at SEPTA, working with SEPTA and, and the uh, rail systems on, on those, on those uh, expansions. So yes, it's still a priority. Um, and so I can probably give you a better update, a uh, more comprehensive update as we move forward. Uh, and I'd be happy to do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Senator Lamb. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Ports, good to see you again. Thanks for taking the, the time to meet earlier. Uh, as you're aware, I'm the Senate Chair of the Joint Audits and Evaluations Committee, and our committee is responsible for overseeing the good work of our legislative auditors. A few months ago, there was an audit of problems at MDTA, particularly with the tolls and tolling booths and overcharges to Maryland motorists. When we had you at our hearing, you in many ways filibustered your responses to our committee, refused to even acknowledge the shortcomings of MDTA, instead blamed drivers and basically told us that the legislative auditors were wrong. From you know, both other colleagues here in the General Assembly, even members of the House, and even other uh, concerns that have been brought up by, uh, the, the other, by, the, by Republicans as well. Let me just quote, um, this is from Delgate Hornberger, a line that I think is, is emblematic. The way that you're rolling out and blaming the victim is just wrong. Stop blaming them and get the issue fixed. I don't want to hear any more excuses. And that's just paraphrasing something that came up um, in a hearing with regards to one of your agencies, MDTA, again, just last week. I think that pretty much sums up your approaches so far. I've seen it, and thus I have a lot of reservations with your approach, your openness, and even transparency. My question to you is, are you going to adjust your approach to be more upfront and candid in your responsiveness to our audits and concerns because your predecessor was well-liked and responsive and he made a lot of progress with MDOT that I would hate to see lost. MDOT, as you know, is one of the largest agencies within the state with, the mo with one of the most number of procurements and subsequently the most number of audits as well. Are you gonna be responsive with a level of openness and transparency that you have not displayed up to this point? Well, Senator, um... You know, I think I would say it like this. I've been very open and honest. You've heard uh, from all of you co your other colleagues that I've been such, uh, very aware of the issues. I will say that, that this issue with MDTA is, is one of those where obviously COVID was a, a detriment to, to us uh, in having to flip the switch, if you will, and go immediately to all electronic tolling, which we were not prepared to do, obviously, because nobody could have predicted COVID. And it was during the, the, the time that we were transitioning from one vendor that we've had for about 15 years to the new vendor. There are some problems 
uh, no question about it. And I quite frankly admitted that uh, in the testimony at the audit committee, that we do admit that there have been problems. Uh, we know that there are problems with the software and we're addressing those. We know that there are problems with, with folks where they uh, have to update their credit card. So it's a combination of a bunch of things. I think that what you're gonna get from me is the honest truth. I'm very up freight, up, up front and straight. And uh, at times, you know, Senator, we may disagree or agree to disagree, if you will, but I'm always gonna look for that opportunity to where we can agree to move Maryland forward in, in the right way that best uh, helps our constituents. So I think that's what you're gonna get from me. Okay, well, that's the first acknowledgement that I've seen of the uh, concerns that the legislative auditors have brought up. I think that at least you're having a different tone than your um, prior hearing that you had before the Joint Audits Committee. Uh, I would urge you to continue to be uh, responsive and uh, open in your future communications with the General Assembly. Okay, thank you. Uh, Senator Rosenthal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just want to say for the benefit of my colleagues, I've known Secretary Ports for a long time. Uh, when I was the vice chair of the Ways and Means uh, Committee, he was the ranking Republican on the committee. And A, we didn't always agree, which is understandable. And um, sometimes he and I both, and you all know me, uh, can be a little aggressive. Uh, but I've always found him to be working in the public interest, always working to try to make stuff happen. And I believe him very sincerely about him wanting to, to work with folks. And so I just want to put that context in here because I think he can he can be a great secretary. Thank you. Hey, sir. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? If not, uh, thank you, Mr. Ports. And uh, I'm going to have to stop praising people. I get hear so much of that. I forget to give opportunity to the uh, nominee. Yeah. I am going to take one committee out of uh, order tonight, and that is the University System of Maryland Board of Regents. Doing that out of deference and respect and appreciation of a friend and colleague uh, who uh, is being nominated tonight, and I am going to uh, give him first opportunity, and that would be former Senator Doug Peters. Doug, uh, that is uh, Senator Watson. I uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and and. This gentleman, this fine gentleman, needs no introduction, but let me just say briefly that uh, Doug Peters, friend, mentor, uh, former member of the Senate from 2007 to 2021. He's been on every committee that you can imagine, joint committees, special joint committees, task force, been there, done that, uh, a very respected member of the General Assembly, and it's my honor to, to support his nomination to the board. So thank you very much. Um, thank you. Uh, Senator Peters. Hey, Mr. Chairman, how you doing? Doing great, you? Oh, very well. We're, there is life after the Senate, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> just wanted to thank uh, Senator Watson for the introduction. I think he's doing a fine job. Um, and I wanna thank the governor for the appointment and uh, I just wanted to thank this body for all the work they've been doing, given these conditions with COVID, you've moved forward, getting things done. Uh, but uh, other than that, I know you guys have a lot of work to do and take any questions that you have. Okay. Any questions or comments for Senator Peters? Ah, I, um, Senator Simonero. Yeah, I'm uh, normally quiet on these things, but um, I had to give a shout out to uh, Senator Peters. We came in the same time. We went and uh, did the bus tour when they, we first got elected and went down to the stadium. But I always found him uh, very approachable and works with both sides of the party, uh, and he got things done. I think it's a great uh, appointment and uh, wish you success in that, Doug. Thank okay. you, Senator. I appreciate it. Thank you. And... Uh, Senator, as a, a Board of Regents appointee to the University of Maryland Medical Systems Board of Directors, uh, you don't actually have to appear before us for that. So oh, wow. um, you're good on, on both counts for now. 
All right. Well, I appreciate it. And I thank you for giving me a few minutes of your time. Thank you. Good seeing you. You too. Okay. Uh, we will go to Ada Beams and Senator Hester. Senator Hester here. I, I am sorry. I wasn't oh. sure if we were going out of order with everybody. Um, I'm just starting my video. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. For the record, Senator Katie Fry Hester, proud to represent District 9. I am honored to introduce uh, Ms. Ada Beams, nominated to the University System of Maryland Board of Regents. Ms. Beams, an Ellicott City resident, is currently a junior at the University of Maryland College Park, where she is pursuing a dual degree in integrative healthcare and French, in addition to being a full-time student. She is project leader for Public Health Without Borders. She is a resident assistant and a member of the Women's Rugby Football Club. Ms. Beams has a long and impressive list of services to organizations in her community going back nearly 10 years. I really appreciate her commitment to the community service and I know her mother, um, and they're a wonderful family here in Western Ellicott City. Thank you, committee. And with that, I'll introduce Ms. Beams. Mr. Chairman, can I uh, second the nomination for Ms. Beams? Uh, I've, known her, I've known her since she was in high school and her family for many, many years as well. So I couldn't think of anyone better as a student to be uh, a member of this board and uh, really pleased and honored to be able to second her nomination here. Okay, thank you. Ms. Beams. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Thank you um, to all of you. I want to thank Governor Hogan first for this nomination, as well as Senator Hester for the introduction and all of your kind words, and as well as Dr. Lamb. As um, they both mentioned, my mom has ran for office and she has grown up in Howard County and lived and worked there her whole life. So we've been around for a minute, and it is truly a huge honor for me to. Um, kind of step into her her legacy and to find my own way to serve the great state of Maryland. So since June, I've had the privilege of serving as the student regent on the University System Board of Regents. And this once in a lifetime opportunity has really helped me grow as a leader and advocate for vulnerable populations. I hope to apply these skills to the remainder of my education, as well as my future career in healthcare. It's an honor to represent my fellow students at the University System of Maryland, and I look forward, as I said, to the remainder of the term, during which I hope to continue uplifting voices of students and growing both personally and professionally. I want to also thank the Board of Regents and all of the staff for their energy and patience teaching me. I know a few of them are here tonight as well. Um, and lastly, I want to thank all of you for your time and your consideration. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Are there any comments or questions for Ms. Beans? Beans, apparently not, so thank you very much. And we will move on to Hugh Breslin and Senator Quarterman. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and colleagues. Uh, for the record, Senator Paul Quarterman, District 2 in Washington County. Uh, happy and proud to introduce to this committee, Mr. Hugh Breslin. Uh, Mr. Breslin is a longtime Maryland resident and recently retired from his 41 year career in TV broadcasting. Uh, serving in a senior management role for Nextdoor Media Group. Uh, Mr. Breslin currently is a media consultant for HJB3 Media and serves on various boards in our local community. Uh, he is a past member of the National Association of Broadcasters 100 Plus Committee. He also served as the chairman of the Greater Hagerstown Committee and was also a member of the Board of Trustees of the Community Foundation of Washington County. Mr. Breslin currently serves as the president of the Board of Trustees for the Fletcher Foundation, and he serves on the Finance Committee for Meredith Medical Center. His resume shows his commitment and leadership both locally and statewide. He continues to be a true asset to not just our community, but the entire state of Maryland. Therefore, I fully support the nomination of Mr. Breslin uh, to the University of System Maryland Board of Regents. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Mr. Breslin. Yes, thank you, Senator Young. Thank you, uh, Senator Quarterman, for that kind introduction. And Senator Young, I don't know if you remember, but in my former life as the uh, uh, running a broadcast television operation, WHAG TV. I think we our paths crossed uh, many years ago. So it's good to see yes, you again. Did. And also, you too. I, I would extend the same to Senator Edwards uh, for the same reason. Uh, our paths crossed now and then. So anyway, uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. I want to thank Governor Hogan uh, for the nomination, the opportunity to serve, if I'm fortunate enough to be confirmed. 
Uh, thanks to each of you for taking the time to review my uh, nomination. You know, I, I obviously was told each of you had a copy of my resume and Senator Gorman probably gave you too much information there, but it is in front of you. I'm, I'm not gonna spend any time there. I know, I know you're busy. Um, having, having said that, um, I, I do wanna share with you that uh, having been a lifelong resident of Maryland and a 1977 graduate of our flagship university in College Park, I'm really excited to serve the system that provided the educational foundation for my broadcasting career. I was very fortunate. I was a, the son of a, a military World War II vet, an officer who his last uh, active duty role was at Fort Meade. And so he retired and, and uh, they, they uh, put roots down in, in Bowie in Prince George's County. And I was fortunate enough to be raised there. And the proximity to College Park allowed me to be a commuter student. Um, my, my parents were not in a position to afford the tuition and certainly not uh, board. So I was able to work my way through the through uh, my college years to get a degree. And I think without the access to the university being so close, no telling if I could have uh, really gotten a degree. Uh, I've been a big supporter of the uh, athletic program at the University of Maryland uh, as a member of its Terrapin Club for the past 33 years. You know, and although I'm a brand new nominated regent, obviously since July of this year, I've enjoyed serving on the advancement committee the Committee on Intercollegiate Athletics and Student Athlete Health and Welfare and the Strategic Communications Work Group. Chancellor Perman and Chair Gooden recognized that my background as a broadcaster and my involvement in many community organizations and foundations would allow my talents and experience to best serve the system, focusing my work on those committees. Having said that, thank you again for your time and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, um, Senator Hayes. Good evening, Mr. Breslin. Um, University of Maryland system has an awesome collection of institutions here in the state of Maryland, but our HBCUs have a, a special designation with being mission driven, um, but oftentimes aren't as competitive. Can you offer us some of what you've learned so far about serving on the board and how we could make sure that our HBCUs are um, competitive, not just here in Maryland, but national? Yeah, I think, um... Obviously, I've been an observer, having only been on the board for this long. But first of all, I would say, number one, the, the leadership of all three of our HBCUs are just outstanding, you know, people. Um, uh, Dr. Hot Anderson at UMES and uh, Dr. Jenkins at Coppin State and Dr. Bro at Bowie State are tremendous leaders. And, and uh, certainly, I think we're in position to, to really enhance and, and grow uh, the, the universities. Um, and I think... Um, we're very proud. I think it's clear the system is very proud that we have three HBCUs in the system. And I think it's very clear that I think the goals of, uh, of this board, at least what I've observed, is that there's a real push that, that we, we uh, have um, the, the best and most excellent universities, uh, not just for our state, but in the country. I, mean, there's, I think there's a belief that there's no reason why the, the, the three HBCUs in our state shouldn't be the best in the country. And I think there's a I think there's a palpable energy to try to make that happen. Um, there's a lot of leveraging of system resources. It appears, and again, I haven't been through a budgeting process, but it appears, you know, from from the discussions, you know, from a, from a capital standpoint, and uh, I think there's co collaboration on some backroom thing. I know there's best practices shared from um, the UMGC's, uh, you know, campus as it relates to online offerings. So I just, um, I guess that's the best way I could state it. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. If there's no other questions, uh, thank you. And we will move on to uh, Ayatollah Aludeo. I'm sorry if I messed that up, but uh, Senator Watson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ayatollah Oludeo. Uh, committee members, I'm proud to support Mr. Oludeo as a member of the University of Maryland Board of Regents. Mr. Oludeo is not only a graduate of Bowie State University, I mean, at Bowie High School, he's a student at Bowie State University studying criminal justice and holding a 3.6 grade point average. His concentration is in forensic science with an interest in law and government. He's also the sophomore class representative member of the National Association of Blacks and Criminal Justice at Bowie State. I'm pleased to ask your support of Mr. Oladeo to the Board of Regents. Okay, Mr. Oladeo. Um, thank you, Senator Watson, for your uh, for your introduction. It's an honor to be here. I'd like to thank all of you on um, State Senate Committee for having me here and for considering me for the position. 
Um, it's been an honor. I'm a first generation American student here. So it's just an honor and a dream of my parents having come here from Nigeria to see me serve in such a position. So if I do have, you know, the privilege of being confirmed and uh, having my nomination confirmed, just be uh, an, an honor overall. Um, having the opportunity to represent the student perspective, especially specifically that of the HBCU student is a great responsibility that I've decided to take upon myself. Um, being a student region on the board is one of those opportunities I saw to be of influence in you know, advancing our HBCUs and progressing the student perspective and student opinions as well. So it just be an overall honor to serve. So I'm thankful for the opportunity. I'm thankful for the consideration and I'm thankful for your time as well. So thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions or comments? If not, uh, thank you very much. And the last one tonight for this board is uh, Andrew Smarek and it's uh, Senator Hershey again. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee for the record, Senator Steve Hershey. I'm pleased to present Andy Smarek for appointment to the University System of Maryland Board of Regents. Mr. Smarek is certainly no stranger to this committee. He's previously served as a chair of Maryland's Higher Education Commission and as president of the Maryland State Board of Education. Mr. Smerrick be began his career in 1998 as a legislative aide for members here in the General Assembly. Subsequently, he served as legislative assistant to one of Maryland's representatives, representatives in the U.S. House of Representatives and as aide to the White House Domestic Policy Council and subsequently deputy secretary at the U.S. Department of Education. Mr. Smerrick has authored or edited four books on education He's a product of Maryland Public Schools, earning a Bachelor in Government and Politics from the University of Maryland at College Park and a Master's of Public Management from the University of Maryland School of Public Policy. I fully support the nomination of Andy Smerrick for Board of Regents. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Smerrick. Uh, thank you so much. Um, good. Uh, first of all, thank you, um, Senator Hershey, for the wonderful introduction. Good evening, Chair Young, Vice Chair Beidel, uh, President Ferguson, and members of the committee. I first want to begin by thanking Governor Hogan for nominating me to the Board of Regents. It's been the greatest honor and pleasure to get to serve the University of Maryland system. Um, and I'd like to thank the committee for its consideration. Um, like uh, Senator Hershey mentioned, I almost 25 years ago, I began working at the General Assembly um, as this young legislative aide. So getting to um, be before you tonight is really quite special. Uh, I'm a product of Maryland Public Schools and the University of Maryland system. I wouldn't be here were it not for these institutions. Um, so it's just a blessing to get to give back in this way, first as the president of the State Board of Ed and then uh, as chair of MHEC uh, and now as a regent. It's truly, uh, honestly, a privilege to get to work alongside these amazing, extraordinary presidents we have, Chancellor Perman, the terrific board chair, uh, Linda Gooden, and the other regents, some of whom you've met tonight. So I just feel very lucky to get to continue to serve the state of Maryland and contribute to the university system that's done so much for me. So with that, um, Mr. Chairman, I'm glad to answer any kinds of questions you or your colleagues have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, Senator Hayes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll be very brief. I just wanted to thank Andrew for reaching out ahead of time. We had a great conversation about the various institutions in the system, especially they use. And um, I think given his experience at MHEC and his thoughtfulness about the quality of education that's being provided to Marylanders. Um, he's an awesome uh, addition to the Board of Regents. So thank you, Andrew. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smart. Okay, we're gonna move on quickly. We've got a lot of uh, pointies yet. We had a lot we've wanted to talk to and about tonight. So let's uh, move forward with the Accountability and Implementation Board and Isaiah Leggett. And uh, Senator Zucker. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, for the record, Senator Craig Zucker. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, Madam Vice Chair, distinguished members of this committee. It's uh, my absolute honor and privilege uh, and without reservation to uh, put forth the nomination and, uh, of uh, the Honorable Isaiah Leggett. Uh, he's no stranger to you all, uh, served, was appointed by you all or approved by you all to the Board of Regents with the University System of Maryland. Uh, was a former uh, Howard Law School professor, county council member, and county executive. And just when uh, 
County Executive Leggett thought he would go into retirement. He was continuously called back to state service, most recently with the Accountability Implementation Board with the Blueprint for Maryland's Future, where the governor, uh, I see Senate President Ferguson is on here as well, and Speaker Jones all uh, appointed him as chair of this AIB Accountability Implementation Board. I think I, I share the, the thoughts of all the Montgomery County senators and just in terms of what a great man Isaiah Leggett is. Uh, we need more, pe more people like him in the state. And uh, I'm just so fortunate and we're all so fortunate that he says yes to these positions. And with that, it's my great honor to just introduce my, my good friend, uh, County Executive Ike Leggett. Thank you, sir, very, very much, good. Senator Zucker. And to you, Senator Young, and all the members of the committee, thank you for considering my nomination to the AIB board. Also want to thank uh, Governor Hogan for this prestigious honor and for all the many people who've supported me in this endeavor. Uh, many of you know me in my capacity, prior capacity, County Executive of Montgomery County, where I served for 12 years. Uh, but you probably did not know uh, that uh, I am a product, a proud product of an educational system that gave me a poor, humble kid from Louisiana, uh, one of 13 kids, an opportunity to be here today. I am the product of public education. I am the model of what we fight for. Growing up in abject poverty, fighting through difficulties of segregation, Jim Crow, to lead one of the great counties of this nation, to serve in our military, to serve as a university professor, and to serve in so many other capacities. But I had the opportunity to have excellent teachers, caring administrators, and people who helped me along the way. Uh, the epitome of my career, I think, would be the opportunity to help other young students, aspiring students in our great state of Maryland, to have such an opportunity. And in this role, this position and what you have done for the great state of Maryland, providing the resources and an opportunity for us to make our educational system even better. I look upon that as a high honor and an opportunity to assist and support. Thank you so very much for this opportunity. Thank you for considering this nomination. I pledge to you that we will make a stream, a stream difference in the state of Maryland for public education. That is my pledge to you. And I think that we have a board we have a commitment, we have resources, and we now have the opportunity to make a powerful difference in public education in our state. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, anyone have any questions or comment? If not, uh, I thank you for all your years of service and it's good seeing you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to the Community Health Resources Commission of Maryland. And the first uh, appointee is Floor uh, GST and Senator Carter. I think you're on. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, it's a pleasure to introduce you to Floor Giusti. Giusti. Are you here for oh, senior social worker in Baltimore? She's been living in Maryland and working in the Baltimore metropolitan area for over 30 years. She's worked with many low-income communities, especially within the Latino immigrant community. The Baltimore Sun recently featured Floor um, in her, the name she's known by most people, Donya Floor, highlighting her commitment and dedication to the health and well-being of others. She's been active in the larger community of service providers and is a member of the Latino Providers Network <clears throat> since its inception. Ms. Juicy has served the Baltimore City Hispanic Commission for several years and under different tenures. She served at the Hispanic Advisory Committee of Baltimore City Police Department. She's currently a member of the board of, at the Mental Health Association of Maryland, and she is a member of the Clinical Scholars Program at the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. It's my pleasure to recommend Ms. Juicy as a member of the Maryland Community Health Resources Commission. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Justy. 
Well, thank you, uh, Senator Carter, for the introduction. I want to thank Governor Hogan for my appointment to the Community Health Resources Com Commission. And I want to thank all of you for the time uh, co to consider my nomination. Uh, I've been a social worker in the Baltimore uh, metropolitan area for the past 30 years. And uh, as uh, Senator Carter said, mostly working with underserved populations and uh, committed to uh, the work with immigrants, uh, especially Latino immigrants in the area. And over this time, I have been uh, uh, in contact and have interacted with other service providers for the Latino community in other parts of the state. I know very well the challenges and difficulties that our communities have in access, uh, accessing health. One challenge is to access programs. There are very few programs. Um, and the other challenge has to do with the cultural differences of the health delivery systems that make it very confusing for immigrants to access the, the, the care they need and the care their children need. Those challenges are reflected in the high rates of morbidity and mortality for them due to lack of primary care, lack of information, scarcity of programs on preventable diseases, or scarcity on access to specialty care. I have also worked with other communities that historically has been left at the margins of many health and wellness initiatives. And in addition to my direct service experience, I have been training on public health leadership with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. I think this nomination gives me the great honor and responsibility to be the voice of these communities and to work together with other commissioners ensuring equity in health all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions or comments? And if not, thank you. And we will move on to David Lear and Senator Quarterman. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, colleagues. Uh, I'd like to introduce to the committee, Mr. David Lear. Uh, Mr. Lear is a resident of Washington County and in January 21, uh, we were fortunate to have him accept the position of Chief Strategic Officer Emeritus Health here in Hagerstown. Uh, Mr. Lear's 17 years of experience in the healthcare field ranges from positions in analytical technology of healthcare, uh, leading the development of a cloud-based uh, clinical decision support system and securing funding for software development, which is used statewide. Uh, Mr. Lear also led the initial incident command for the COVID-19 pandemic. It was recognized among the top 25 emerging healthcare leaders by modern healthcare. Uh, Mr. Lear's current position at Meredith proves to be a true asset to our community. We oversee population health, business development, IT and real estate, Again, we're fortunate to have this exceptional young leader on our board here at Meredith, as he's proven to be an asset not only to our community, but the entire state of Maryland. Uh, therefore, I fully support the nomination of Mr. Lear to the Maryland Community Resources Commission. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Mr. Lear? Thank you for the introduction, Senator Quarterman. And I'd like to thank Governor Hogan for appointing me to the Community Health Resources Commission. I'm looking forward to all the great work ahead. I've spent my career focused on making healthcare more affordable and accessible for our most vulnerable neighbors. And I'm honored to have the opportunity to continue that focus for the people of Maryland through the CHRC. Thanks for taking the time to consider me today. All right, thank you. Any uh, questions or comments? If not, thank you again. And we will move to the State Community Health uh, Worker Advisory Committee and Dr. Elizabeth Crom and Senator Gizan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Elizabeth Crom uh, got her doctorate at Johns Hopkins in health policy and management. She's held significant positions at the American Cancer Society, the Howard County Health Department, the Chew Char Pew Charitable Trust. Uh, she teaches at the Bloomberg School of Public Health. Uh, currently, she is the Vice President of Population Health and Advancement at Howard County General. She's a friend, a brilliant individual who not only um, is smart, but takes uh, policy and makes it real. Uh, recently, her team has created a state accredited community health worker training program, which is the only hospital in the state uh, to run a certification program. And I can't tell you how important that is in these times. So uh, I highly recommend Elizabeth Crom. Okay, Dr. Chairman, Crum. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to just second uh, okay. Dr. Crom's nomination really quickly. Um, she, I've, she's someone I've known for many, many years, done a phenomenal job in our local community in Howard County, as Senator Gazzoni has mentioned, uh, just a, a great public health leader here. And 
Uh, uh, it's great to see her be able to continue on in this new role, um, as well as her old role at Howard County General as well. So with that, I'm really pleased to be able to second her nomination. Okay, thank you, Dr. Crum. Great, good evening, thank you. I'd like to begin by thanking Governor Hogan for the nomination to serve on this advisory committee. I'd also like to thank all of you, the members of the committee for your time tonight. I am a public health professional, that's what I do, and I'm a longtime advocate for community health workers. Their role in community-based initiatives as well in healthcare, as well as with healthcare interventions have been proven to be both effective and critical to advancing community health and well-being. And I'm very proud, as Senator Gazzoni mentioned, of my own population health team here at Howard County General Hospital, who took the success of our community health worker-based intervention and turned it into the platform for our own community health worker training program that's accredited by the state. And we're into our fourth cohort of trainees. I know you have a copy of my CV. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions if you have them. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions or comments? It appears not. So. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll move to uh, Lachelle Stewart and Senator Jennings. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator J.B. Jennings, for the record, from Ms. Lachelle Stewart. Uh, I've had the honor to know Ms. Stewart for numerous years. She actually applied to my office several years ago for a senatorial scholarship, which I gladly awarded her. And it's good to see this thing come full circle where now she's actually going to be helping the state out. Uh, she spent nine years with a, as a family service coordinator with Google Industries before eventually moving to the Baltimore Healthy Start program where she was the deputy director uh, from 2015 uh, till about 2017 when she actually became the acting executive director and eventually took over the role as the executive director. She's done an incredible job there. It's an organization that's very important in Baltimore and other areas. And I highly recommend her having seen this come full circle with, you know, as I said, getting a scholarship to this point. So again, highly recommend. And Ms. Stewart. Okay, thank you, Ms. Stewart. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Senator Jenny. Um, I am a resident of Harvard County, but I was born and raised in Baltimore City. Um, I'm a mother of two boys and I'm, as he said, I'm the executive director of Baltimore Healthy Start. I've been working with families um, multi-generationally for the past 25 years. I have a passion for working with um, programs that do, do direct service to families. Uh, Baltimore Healthy Start is a nonprofit that's been in, in operation for uh, 30 years, and we serve about 1,000 people in Baltimore uh, annually. Uh, my passion um, and reason for wanting to be on the Community Health Worker Advisory Board is because community health workers are our bread and butter. They are the um, main line of our workforce. Um, they are the ones that are out in the trenches working with families. And so um, it's my desire that people with that title get the adequate resources, training, and support that they need to help serve families and improve the lives of um, Maryland citizens. Um, I would like to thank Governor Hogan for um, my um, nominate, nominating me for this um, position and also um, thanks Senator Jennings again. Thanks um, in the past for again for the scholarship and thanks for supporting my nomination. Um, thank you um, Senator Young and all the other members of the Executive Nominations Committee uh, for your time and just would like to ask if anyone has any questions for me. I know you have my resume. Okay, are there any questions or comments? Uh, appears you're getting off easy. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to the Maryland Environmental Service. We have six appointees. The first is Shelley Heller and Senator Hershey. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee for the record, Senator Steve Hershey. I'm very pleased to present Shelley Heller for appointment to the MES board. I've had the honor of knowing Shelley and working directly with her for the last six years in her position as county administrator for Kent County. Many of you may also be familiar with Ms. Heller as she has been on the legislative policy committees for both MML and MAKO. I fully support the nomination of Shelly Heller for MES board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Heller. Good evening, Chair Young, Vice Chair Vital, and committee members. First, I would like to express my appreciation to the governor for the nomination. 
Secondly, thank you very much to Senator Hershey for the introduction and thank you for taking the time to review my resume and consider me for the reappointment, reappointment to the MES board. This past year with MES has been engaging and challenging as we navigated the new requirements that resulted from the passage of the Maryland Environmental Reform Act of 2021. As fiduciary agents of taxpayer money, it is critical that the proper oversight and attention is given to such an important agency. As the county administrator for Kent County, I am used to in-depth reviews of policies, budgetives, budgets, and initiatives. Additionally, as county administrator, I oversee departments that fulfill the same missions as the one MES performs, not to mention the accompanying procurement, HR duties, and analysis of the projects that go along with those missions. I am an advocate for transparency and regula regulation compliance, which I know is of particular importance at this point in time. I believe you will find my qualifications and skill sets align well with the MES board, and I would be honored to continue to move MES in a positive and productive direction. I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, if not, thank you very much for Mr. being here. Oh, was someone asking you to speak? Mr. Chairman, um, I have a quick question for Ms. Heller. Um, and in the interest of time, I'm not going to ask all the nominees this, but um, as you're certainly aware, um, there were a lot of challenges with the prior board of the Maryland Environmental Service. And I um, anticipate that as you come into this role, um, that uh, you will be sure to keep the best interests of the state and the agency in mind um, in taking the responsibility, obviously, very seriously and to um, abide by the bylaws of MES and state statute. Is that correct? That is absolutely true. We keep a watchful eye. Every single board uh, meeting that we have is on making sure that we are abiding not only by the open meetings uh, rules, but making sure that the board members as well as staff are, are in full compliance with the spirit and the letter of the law. Okay, thank you, Ms. Heller. Thank you. Okay, thank you and thank you, Ms. Heller. And we will move to Marion Huang and uh, Senator Hedelman. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the committee, I'm Shelley Hedelman from uh, District 11 in Baltimore County, and I'm pleased to be here this evening to introduce Marion Huang. Um, Ms. Huang was appointed to the Board of Directors uh, in this past July, and she serves currently as the chair of the Human Resources Committee. Um, in that capacity, under the reform legislation that we adopted last year, she was required to file seven um, different policies on human resource matters. And uh, by the end of this past calendar year, which she did so. Um, and she's been an environmental attorney since joining the firm of Miles and Stockbridge in 1987. She's a principal of the firm and she chairs their environmental practice group. Um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Ms. Wong. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Wong. Mr. Chair, Senator Bidell and committee members, um, and thank you, Senator Kettleman, for your kind introduction. I also wish to express my gratitude to the governor for appointing me to the board of the Maryland Environmental Services and to the members of the Senate Executive Nominations Committee for its time in considering my appointment. As had been noted by Senator Hedelman, I have been an environmental attorney with the firm of Miles and Stockbridge for over 30 years and chair its environmental and energy practice group. It's an honor to have been appointed and I hope that my legal experiences as an environmental attorney will help to serve the citizens of Maryland as a member of the board. I know how valuable your time is and that you have copies of my resume, so I'll spare you any further details unless you have any questions. And again, thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. And are there any questions or comments? Uh, seeing none, uh, thank you again. And uh, we'll move on to Robert. Uh, let's skip that, uh, Bobby Neal and uh, Senator Riley. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Ed Riley, District 33. And um, I was just gonna say Bobby Neal and leave it at that, but I can't. Mr. Neal has one of those unique people in Maryland history 
who has served both as a member of the House of Delegates in the Maryland Senate, as a county councilman, and as a secretary of the Maryland Department of Health. Bob's been a, um, in the military in the United States Navy for several years, uh, graduated of uh, University of Maryland, class of 72, uh, is a um, recipient of the First Citizens Award and is well known to us. Um, he will obviously do a great job on MES and I would uh, strongly recommend his appointment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh, Bobby, can you hear? Uh, Bobby, are you there? He's in the meeting. I'm not sure. I'll ask him to unmute. There, How about that? Did. Okay. Is that better? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and thank you, Senator Riley, for your kind words. I'd like to thank the governor for offering me a, yet another chance to serve our beloved state. <laughs> um, I would... Uh, I would, I would say uh, at the outset, I would like to associate my comments with, uh, with Shelley and Marion. Uh, the governor's assembled a great group of directors. Uh, we spent the summer, fall, and early winter uh, doing our homework uh, as assigned by the General Assembly of Maryland. I think we turned in everything on time and, um, and uh, in proper form. And I'm really proud to serve with this group of people because um, uh, they really got their eye on the ball and it's, it's a privilege to serve with them. Um, uh, this committee uh, has, has enough uh, information on hand to confirm me or um, uh, discharge me, uh, wh whatever's your pleasure. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tarry any longer, uh, but if you did have a stray question or two, I'd be happy to answer. Okay, are there any questions? Uh, Senator Pinsky. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, more a comment than a question. I've known Mr. Neal for lots of years, and he never says no, and I've encouraged him to learn how to say no um, to take care of his life and retirement and his health, um, but he's clearly uh, uh, added value to this uh, uh, Environmental Service Board. He's he's always worked in undying uh vigor with whatever project he's assigned. And uh, I appreciate and respect uh, Bobby's life's work. So uh, he's a great guy to serve on this board. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, if any of you have uh, been up to Frederick to enjoy the beauty of Carroll Creek, which was picked as one of the best urban parks in the country la uh, last year, uh, going back 40 years, there were three or four people that came through when we needed uh, money to start that project because the cost of the project was many times the entire city budget. And it was difficult to get it going. And uh, going back about 40 years, Bobby was one of three or four that really came through for us. And if we hadn't had that in the beginning, it would have never happened. So, Mr. Chairman, I smile every time I drive through Frederick. <laughs> and I hope you drive through and stop a lot. Okay. Thank well, you. Thank you very much. And oh, Senator Biddle, did you have your hand up? Yes. Senator Young, thank you, Chairman Young. Um, I just want to congratulate Bobby on making the decision to um, serve on this board. He was our county executive for four years and did a lot to straighten out the county. And I know this board needs the help that Bobby can bring. So I saw Bobby on Saturday. I have to tell you, he looks really good since he's no longer the Secretary of Health. <laughs> so um, I wish him good health. And I thank him for serving on this board. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Okay. Thank you. And thank you, Bobby. Yep. All right, we'll move on to Frederick Smalkin and uh, Senator West. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, this is gonna be an incredible board, I've gotta say. Um, so I've known Judge Smalkin for 40 years or more, and I have a very high opinion of it. His resume takes pages. I'm gonna do a very brief once over lightly. He graduated from Johns Hopkins University. Then he graduated from the University of Maryland Law School. He graduated first in his class. President Ronald Reagan appointed him to the US District Court for the District of Maryland, which is the federal court that covers the whole state. He served on that for 25 years, including serving as chief judge of the US District Court for the state of Maryland. Um, so he currently is the chairman of the Maryland Environmental Service. And I hope you will report favorably on his nomination. 
Okay, thank you. Um, Judge Malkin? Yes, uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you very much uh, for uh, Senator West. I've known him for the 40 years he's known me. So uh, I thank him very much. And of course, I'm very uh, happy to be here and uh, to thank Governor Hogan and all of you who have taken the opportunity to, to talk to us this evening. Uh, frankly, I couldn't say it any better than the people you've already heard from our wonderful uh, group of uh, board members. Uh, they are working hard. They've worked hard. They've done a lot. Uh, they've gotten everything done that the General Assembly wanted uh, in uh, 2021. Uh, we got it all done, and it was there on time. And uh, it was helped very much, I think, by the MES personnel and the AG's office that helped us put all this together and get it right and get it at the right times. Um, all I can say really is that uh, I'm uh, proud to tell you that uh, after many hours of work, we've been able to do everything we were required to do by the General Assembly and have done it on time. And I uh, would like to just finish quickly uh, by saying that uh, our goals will always remain to give the people of Maryland the best work we possibly can by seeing to it that the waters and lands of the state remain environmentally clean and safe. So if there are any questions, certainly I'm happy to uh, try to answer them. Okay, are there any questions or comments? I see none, so you did well. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Uh, Thank you. It's about time for me to do something well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> Thank you. I know Thank the you, feeling. Chris. Thank you, Chris, especially. Bye -bye now. Okay, next is uh, Hiram Tanner and uh, Senator Watson. Thank you, Chair Young um, and members of the uh, Executive Committee. Uh, Senator for the 23rd Legislative District, it's my pleasure to support Mr. Hiram Tanner as member of the Maryland Environmental Service Board. Mr. Tanner, in addition to being a fellow engineer with a master's in engineering and an MBA from School of Wharton, is so well suited for this position. Um, it's ridiculous. He has years of experience in engineering, design, construction management, and wastewater planning management. He has lent his experience to the United States Department of Transportation, District of Columbia's Department of Public Works, and the Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority, just to name a few organizations. Uh, most importantly, we all remember the great flood that took place in 1993, which covered nine states and in some places lasted over 200 days with damages approaching uh, 15 billion with the failure of hundreds of levees. Mr. Turner worked to create a program to capture the relevant data and statistics, which the Corps of Engineers has been able to use to calculate potential extent of floods and plan repairs and replacements to mitigate the impacts of these types of events. Uh, that being said, I strongly support the appointment of Mr. Hiram Tanner to the Maryland Environmental Service Board. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. And uh, Mr. Tanner? Yeah, thank you. And good evening to all. Uh, I'm, as a nominee of the Board of Directors of Maryland Environmental Services, having been graciously chosen by <clears throat> Governor Hogan, I'd like to thank my our Senator for his kind introduction and thank you and your colleagues, Mr. Young, for consideration of my nomination to the board. I'd like to thank personally thank Governor Hogan for my nomination. Having the governor select me for the NES board is confirmation that my career goal of developing innovative solutions to the water wastewater industry did not go unnoticed. As a practicing engineer, I began my career designing protection against stream flooding. It's time to take that knowledge I've gathered through the 50, last 50 years and apply it to the goals of MES. Okay. I'm a, excuse me, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm excited about moving forward. It's, if confirmed, it will be my pleasure to serve as a member of the Board of Directors of MES. All right, thank you. Are there any uh, questions or comments? If not, you did well also. And thank you for being here. Thank you. And we'll move to Robert Witt and Senator Edwards. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, Senator Edwards, for the record, District 1, Garrett Allegheny in Washington County. It's my real pleasure to introduce to you for nomination to the Maryland Environmental Service Board, Bobby Witt. If you look at his resume, he's got a wide uh, range of not only educational uh, learnings, but also hands-on, which I think is important to have someone on the board who's actually worked in on a lot of things that uh, uh, Maryland Environmental Service deals with. As a Bachelor of Science in Technical Management, Associate of Science in Machining Technology, National Institute of Metalworking Skills Certification. Uh, he had uh, in 2011, he's a Maryland Rising Star Award. Been a uh, machine shop foreman in Garrett County for uh, Fairfax Mining and Welding. Uh, he's a uh, preventive maintenance coordinator meter technician from 2005 to 12 in Garrett County. And he presently is the, uh, uh, I think the get the name right, they changed it once or twice, the project manager acting director of the uh, public utilities in Garrett County. He's worked with uh, MES on several projects, so he knows what needs to be done. And I think he'd be a great addition to this board and I highly recommend him. Okay, thank you, Mr. Witt. Uh, thanks for the kind words, Senator Edwards. Um, I was appointed to the Maryland Environmental Service Board of Directors in July of last year. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Governor Hogan for this appointment and also to thank all of you for your time and consideration. It has been an absolute honor for me to be part of that board for the last seven months. I bring with me my experience from Garrett County. I have over 20 years of experience in the water and sewer industry, working from the ground level up. Um, the last 16 years of it has been at with Garrett County government. Um, I began working in the uh, operations and maintenance divisions of the county and work my way up through, um, um, I'm now the Capital Projects Division Chief for Garrett County, um, handling all of our infrastructure projects. Okay, uh, are there any questions of uh, Mr. Witt? Uh, if not, thank you for being here. And uh, we'll move on to the juvenile uh, Board of Juvenile Services Education and Grace Rusing and Senator Hester. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and esteemed members of the committee. For the record, Senator Katie Fry Hester. I'm proud to represent District 9. Today I'm here to introduce Grace Rusing, nominated to the Juvenile Services Education Board. She is a resident of Ellicott City and with over 30 years of juvenile ex judicial experience, including a decade as an assistant public defender in the Juvenile Protection Division. A, a position she recently retired from in January of 2022. So she's wasting no time in getting back to work, but congratulations on that. Um, she has a background in criminal defense services, education advocacy, and juvenile justice system reform, working collaboratively with juvenile justice stakeholders, parents, elected officials, and other advocacy groups to reform the juvenile services education system. Since she was appointed uh, six months ago, she's been voted chairperson of the Juvenile Services Education Board. And with that, I'd like to thank Ms. Rusing for her commitment to continue public service and thank the board. And with that, I'll turn it over to Ms. Rusing. Okay, Ms. Rusing. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Hester, for that introduction. I wanna thank the governor for the nomination and I appreciate the opportunity to serve on the JSEP board and to help improve educational outcomes for our students who are detained in DJS juvenile facilities. So I know that you have my resume and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, are there any questions? Uh, appears not to be, so thank you very much for being here. Thank you. And uh, it's been a long meeting tonight, but we're getting close. Uh, next board is the Maryland Technology Development Corporation Board of Directors and Cliff Dr. Clifford Coppersmith and Senator Hershey. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee for the record, Senator Steve Hershey. I'm very, very pleased to present Dr. Clifford Coppersmith for appointment to the TEDCO Board of Directors. Dr. Coppersmith is currently president of Chesapeake College, located in Y Mills, which serves the five counties of the Mideastern Shore. I've had the honor to work with Dr. Coppersmith 
not only on local community initiatives, but many times on legislative and funding issues directly related to Chesapeake College. It's been a pleasure to do so. So I fully support the nomination of Dr. Coppersmith to the TEDCO Board of Directors. Okay, Dr. Coppersmith. Thank you, Senator Hershey. I uh, appreciate that introduction. Uh, it's an honor to serve in this capacity. I'm very grateful for Governor Hogan's uh, uh, nomination and appreciate the consideration of the committee of my service on the TEDCO Board where I bring my years of service as a higher education and rural economic development specialist. And I really do appreciate uh, both Governor, I'm sorry, Senator Hershey's sponsorship and nomination, but also Addie Eckert's sponsorship and support over the last several years. I, uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve and uh, uh, look forward to the committee uh, approving my nomination so I can move on with work with TEDCO. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions? Apparently not, so thank you again. And we'll move on to Ellen Flowers Fields. Mr. And, Chairman. Uh, yes. Mr. Chairman. Oh, sorry, I didn't see your um, hand. Uh, thank but, you very much, Senator Eckert Chair, and I was hoping to second this nomination, but I just, just want to say it's been a real pleasure to work with Dr. Coppersmith, and we welcome his leadership, and I think he will be quite an asset to the TEDCO board, which is important to our region. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cuthbert Smith. Thank you. All right, thank both of you. And we'll go to Ellen Flowers Fields and Senator Ellis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, members of the Executive Nomination Committee, Senator Arthur Ellis represented District 28, Charles County. I'm here to happily uh, thank uh, Ms. Ellen Flowers Fields uh, as a member of the TEGCO board. Uh, Ms. Field serves currently as Executive Vice President for Continuing Education and Workforce Development at the College of Southern Maryland. She's responsible for the oversight of all areas of the non-credit economic and community development program, which includes the Center for Trades and Energy Training, the Maryland Center for Environmental Training and Workforce Center, the Small Business Development Center, the Nonprofit Institute, the Transportation Center, and Adult Basic Education. And she's so busy, uh, she has time for the TECO board. She has 25 years of professional experience in the field of workforce development and human capital management. And throughout her career, she has acquired and managed over $100 million in support of various economic and community development initiatives. Uh, therefore, colleagues, she's well capable to serve on the TECO board and I offer my strongest recommendations. Okay, are there any questions? If not, uh, thank you very much. And we'll move to uh, John Paris and Senator Bailey. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, will Ms. Fields give it up to- Oh, I'm, to, to I'm rushing too much here. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's the third time I've done that tonight. Go ahead, Ms. Uh, Thank you, Senator Ellis. I'd like to thank uh, Governor Hogan for this nomination and you, the distinguished members of this nominations committee for allowing me the opportunity to express my interest in continuing to serve on the TEDCO Board of Directors. TEDCO's mission to enhance economic empowerment by providing inclusive entrepreneurial innovation ecosystem aligns with my life work in managing, supporting, and uh, implementing economic and workforce business development programs and strategies. And as a stakeholder in the community, I've collaborated with staff and leadership at TEDCO for over a decade. And I'm honored by the opportunity to support the organization's mission and, and their continued future. And I'd certainly be happy to answer any questions. Okay, are there any questions? It appears not, so thank you again. And now John Paris and Senator Bailey. Senator Bailey here. Yes. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and distinguished members of the committee. For the record, Senator Bailey, District 29, representing St. Mary's in Calvert County. Tonight, I have the pleasure to introduce to you John Parrish for your consideration. Mr. Parrish was a former CEO and a founder of Smartronics. He has more than 30 years of experience in the information technology and engineering industry. His diverse technical background combined with his successful history in business development strategy and operations assisted him in establishing Smartronics as one of the fastest growing companies in the Washington DC metropolitan area. 
and one of the leading IT service and engineering solution providers in the Washington Metro region. I support his nomination to the Maryland Technical Development Corporation Board of Directors. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Parrish. Thank you, Senator Bailey, for the introduction. Good evening to everyone. I'd also like to thank Governor Hogan for the nomination to the TEDCO board and the Senate committee members, not only for your time and effort throughout this confirmation process, but for everything you do in service to our great state. I believe I'm well suited for the TEDCO board as a successful entrepreneur that co-founded and led as CEO of Smartronics Incorporated, a great Maryland story. Smartronics was founded in 1995 in a one-room one basement office in St. Mary's County. Over 25 years, I helped lead Smartronics from those humble beginnings into a global information technology and engineering, engineering solutions provider with more than 10 offices throughout the United States and approximately $650 million in annual revenue. I'm now managing director for Parade LLC, an $8 million product development company that was carved out of Smartronics prior to its 20, December 2019 acquisition by Ocean Sound Partners, a Manhattan-based private equity firm. I believe that I have the experience and the background, certainly, uh, to assist in TEDCO and, and its great mission. If you have any questions, I'd be pleased to answer or address them. Okay. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, appears not. So thank you for appearing tonight. And thank you. We'll move on to Jeffrey uh, Rhoda and uh, President Ferguson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, Mr. Rhoda is a phenomenal uh, resident of the 46th Legislative District who will be an excellent, excellent member of the TEDCO board. He's uh, recently retired as of June of 2019, but spent 40 years at IBM doing worldwide sales uh, on the public sector side. Um, his most recent, his or his last position before retiring was as general manager for the Greater, Greater China Group. Uh, and he was located in Beijing. He's lived um, in Shanghai, Singapore, Sydney, Seoul, and Beijing uh, throughout his, his uh, illustrious uh, career. And his perspective will be incredibly helpful for the TEDCO companies as they are, I'm sure, trying to grow and move into emerging markets. Uh, pleased to introduce him and, and strongly endorse his candidacy and appointment uh, to the TEDCO board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rhoda. Thank you, Chairman Young. I would like to also thank Governor Hogan. This is a, a great honor and opportunity. Uh, you've seen several members nominated for the TEDCO board here tonight. I know you've approved everyone that's gone through. Uh, it is a very diverse set of people in every way, including the, the uh, business backgrounds they have. So I'm honored to be a part of that group if we get through. Uh, Senator Ferguson, thank you for your kind introduction, uh, especially coming from my home district. Thank you very much. And Chairman Young and the entire committee, we know how busy you are. I really appreciate your consideration and your time. Uh, this is a remarkable opportunity. Uh, TEDCO continues to be an accelerator uh, for the Maryland economy. And as you heard, I've spent all my entire career in IT. Uh, I've been looking for the right opportunity to give back and really stay in the IT industry. And this just seems like a perfect setup for that. So I'm really excited. Um, one of the things that you might uh, wonder why does a big company experience from a company like IBM apply to a startup entrepreneurial organization like Tedco and its, its companies. There isn't a job I had where we didn't work with small, medium businesses because they brought the solutions to market and we integrated them into the customer's IT infrastructure. So we did this in literally every job I ever had. My first 20 years was working with governments, federal, state, and local. Uh, the last 20 years was more general manager running businesses in various countries. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, with your confirmation, I look forward to contributing to TechEdco's success. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer. Okay, are there any questions? If not, Xie uh, Xie Wan on. Xie Xie Ni. Okay. Um, Last we have is the University of Maryland Medical System uh, Board of Directors. And uh, I see Jeffrey Armager is here and Senator Riley. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Last but not least, Jeffrey Armager. Uh, Mr. Armager is a graduate of UMBC, University of Baltimore and Johns Hopkins University. He has concentrated his um, lifelong work with the, in the commercial banking industry for over 40 years. For the past 24 years, he's been with bb &T. He brings a very strong business background to this board. would strongly recommend him. 
Okay. Uh, Mr. Armitage. Thank you, Senator Armager. Riley. I um, appreciate your introduction. I want to thank Governor Hogan for his nomination. I saw him this morning at the EWMC Healthcare Heroes Appreciation Day. And I also want to help all or thank all the members of this committee for their good work in this in this confirmation process. Um, as Senator Riley described my resume as an exercise in persistence, 40 years of leading community banking business development teams. That good work gave rise to a tremendous amount of nonprofit leadership work, including chairing economic development, chairing the research park at UMBC. The star of the show has been BWMC, where I've served for 11 years and done work in finance, quality and safety, strategic planning, fundraising, and recruiting. Um, the step up to the UMS board is, an, is a big and important step, but it's one for which I'm prepared. And um, having retired, I, I now have the time and the energy and the focus to make that work the centerpiece of my nonprofit leadership. Thank you. Thank you. And are there any questions? Mr. Or Chairman. Uh, Senator Vidal. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to second Mr. Arminger's nomination. I've known him for almost 30 years when we um, participated in leadership on Arundel together. And as chairman of president of our BWMC board, he's already doing an amazing job. And I know he'll be a great asset to the UMS board. So I just second his nomination. Thank you. Thank you. Sandra Lamb. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and uh, to Mr. Armager, I'm glad to see that you're an appointee here. I just wanted to, you're probably aware of the fact that the UMS board in the past has had some challenges, particularly with uh, board members and insider dealing. And I want to just urge you to be sure to, um, you know, abide by all the bylaws and practices that are proper as well as state statute when it comes to, to this appointment. I'm sure you will. So uh, isn't that the case? I appreciate your comment. And I'll tell you that uh, governance has risen to the same organizational imperative level as quality and safety. It's, uh, it's an all day, every day discipline at the system level and at the hospital level. I can tell you, um, you know, I, I suppose if I were a better banker, I would have a more complicated conflict of interest uh, backstory, but um, I, I have been vetted six ways to Sunday and I have no conflicts whatsoever. And um, um, leadership and I will continue to be very vigilant on that matter. I appreciate your comment. Okay, glad to hear that. Thank you. Back to you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, that uh, concludes that commission. Thank you for being here. Um, Thank you. Uh, no, excuse me. We do have Ellen Fish. Is uh, Ellen Fish here tonight? I don't think we do have Ellen Fish. I'm <laughs> not. I'm not sure that she's actually required to be. Um, no, Mr. Chair, we took her off the agenda. Yeah. So she's okay. not required to be confirmed. Okay, that uh, that concludes the appointees tonight. So um, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. And Second. All those in favor and uh, stay, stay tuned. We'll come back for voting. So uh, do we need a pause for that or? No, no Chair Young, we're, we're going to vote live. Okay. Okay. All right. I do have a request to uh, uh, hold uh, Secretary Ports temporarily. So if there's no objection, we'll do that uh, at least for this week. And uh, we have one appointment to pick up from last week. Uh, Senator Vidal, did you have your hand up? I was just ready to make the motion. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, it's Mr. Hodge from last week. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just as I, uh, it was uh, last week that uh, Senator Kagan had asked to have a follow-up conversation, and I believe she did, and uh, was impressed by uh, Mr. Hodges' community engagement efforts and, and asked that uh, uh, we continue to move forward with his appointment. Okay, so we will include him on the voting list for tonight. And that includes those we heard and those in uh, section two. So do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, I'll make the motion that we pass all of the nominations tonight, both um, the ones we heard and the ones that are statewide, except 
we will hold Secretary Ports and we will add Mr. Harold Hodges from the Lottery Commission. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? Second. All right, we have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That's one issue. Okay, that concludes the meeting. Thank you for being patient. This is probably the longest meeting we've had in the last <laughs> few years.